Welcome to Unbreakable Latina. Hi guys, welcome back to Unbreakable Latina. This is your host Melina. If my voice sounds a little different, it's because your girl got sick. So Sunday I recorded and I went to work the next day Monday. I felt fine, except I was having like a little dry cough, but I thought it was because at the office I was working at, there was an air freshener that was not mine. And sometimes these air fresheners give me allergies. So I just kept telling everybody, oh my god, that air freshener is so annoying. And all day I kept having like this dry cough. And then later throughout the day, like I started getting kind of a sore throat. And I was like, it's in my head. It's probably because I'm tired. And like I had a long weekend. I didn't rest much. But when I got home, I was just like, I don't feel myself. So I decided to take a COVID at home test. So I took one. The first line appeared negative. But you know, you have to leave it 15 minutes. So I left it there for a couple more minutes and I walk back over and I start seeing a second line appear. And a second line means positive. So I was like, no way. So right away I take another one because I'm like, this test is wrong. There's no way. And again, the little line appeared. So definitely was positive for COVID and it wasn't my first rodeo. I started freaking out because I had been with my family all weekend with my mom, my uncle, my aunt, my cousins my sister and we were all together all weekend and the same thing had happened last time when I got COVID. Last time I was the only one that got it. We were not vaccinated so it was really bad. I had the worst cold, everything. I had every symptom on the list. So I started freaking out this time. I was just like, oh my gosh, it's not happening again. Like, I hope it doesn't get as bad, but thankfully it didn't. The first night was actually really hard for me because I think I was getting anxiety just thinking about the fact that I couldn't breathe last time and I thought the same thing was going to happen, so I was scared to go to sleep. Just anxious and also anxious about the fact that my family potentially could have it as well. Mostly my mom, my aunt, and my uncle I was worried about, but the first Three days were pretty rough. Um, I basically just slept all day and coughed myself to sleep. And I was trying so hard to not get my mom sick because she hasn't had COVID and I was scared that she's going to get it. And unfortunately, she did get it. By like my fourth day, I heard her voice was kind of like deep like mine and she kept on like dry coughing as well. I made her a COVID test appointment. She went to go take it. I ordered a at-home test because we had run out and right away when she took it, the two lines came up and she was positive and I started having a meltdown and I started crying and I was like, I'm so sorry. It's all my fault. And um, as much as you don't want it to feel like it's your fault because it's not, It does feel like your fault. Like, I don't know where I got it. I most likely got it at work because 90% of the population at work right now is out with COVID. But I can't prove that. And for you people that were asking, where'd you get sick? Like, I don't know. Like, I wish I could tell you the moment I felt it entering my body. And to those people, it's my family. My family kept asking me, where do you think you got it? Um, I don't know. Where do you think you guys got it when you got it? So yeah, I was having a meltdown. I was crying, like literally crying, telling my mom I was sorry for getting her sick and I felt so guilty. And then she's like being a mom, tosiendo, and she's like, está bien, mira, no es tu culpa, like, tú no no sabías. And I'm just like, "Ah, I'm sorry, I'm the worst daughter ever. But um, yeah, she's fine now. Today is like her day three, I think, or day two, not sure. She's doing a lot better. She's coughing. It didn't hit her too hard, only like the first day I believe but we're so used to being out and going on walks going to Ross going to TJ Maxx Target that we feel like prisoners right now my family actually today had a barbecue and my uncle's like you could come it's okay I'm like I'm not gonna go leave my mom by herself but they actually made us plates of food I went to go pick them up and it was nice to see my family it was very sad that I couldn't stay but I wore my mask I stayed six feet apart from everybody pero no nos íbamos a perder la carne asada because my uncle makes the best barbecue ever and honestly 
this the summers are where my family thrives we love having barbecues getting together being in the pool and i was just watching everybody in the pool and i'm like oh that's cool like i wish i was there but there's always more weekends and our health comes first and i hope that by next weekend we'll be good because it's my sister's birthday so i want to be able to celebrate with her and we're doing actually a little getaway to catalina i'm super excited about it i almost messed up okay i did mess up my sister um texted me to get the tickets and i was like oh yeah i'll get them later but i think she texted me while i was at work i was doing something i completely forgot pasaron dos días and then on saturday when we're at the concert she's like did you get your tickets I'm like oh shit let me buy them right now they were sold out like i didn't know catalina island was so popular but apparently it's been cut apparently have you guys watched that video that shit is so funny the little kid that goes apparently i never been on live tv apparently if you haven't you have to watch it i'll post it on instagram because i always say apparently like that anyways um apparently everyone likes going to catalina island it's been popping up on my for you page on tiktok and everybody's going there i mean i've been there a couple of times but oh damn it's, it got real popular so the tickets were sold out and my sister's like you serious and i'm like i felt like crap because i was like oh my gosh i fucked up so anyways i was able to find another boat that goes to catalina from newport as well so my mom and i and my cousin we're gonna go on a separate boat it's, it runs at the same time but i almost didn't get to go sorry roxy so when i got my positive results the first thing that came to my head was like wow i'm gonna get a lot for the podcast done Como si de veras. i was just like what the hell like my mind is always on grind mode now and i hate it because i can't just sit there and relax and if i do I feel guilty anyways that didn't happen i haven't done shit like today was the first day que me arreglé me sentía like ugly and i felt like i still don't feel the cutest right now but ahora me peiné me pinté so me siento un poco mejor in the beginning the whole week i didn't wear makeup i didn't do my hair my hair is already falling last time i had covid my hair was falling so much and right now it's already doing it like puños y puños de greñas que me están saliendo like it sucks but i'm getting healthy that's all that matters i rested i did a lot of sleeping and i did a lot of binge watching tv i actually watched this show called vida it's on stars it's so good if you haven't watched it you should i found it on hulu i believe there's a season three i watched season one and two it's very graphic because it's stars so don't watch it in front of your children's or if you feel uncomfortable in front of your parents and don't watch it but honestly it's really good it's about two sisters who grew up in east la and they're navigating life coming back home when they have been away from home for a while they talk about gentrification and just growing up hispanic latino it is such a great show i think everyone should watch it i loved it i recommended it to a few friends they're already hooked on it they've been watching it and let me know if you watch it and what you think about it because i really liked it so since i have been home i've been spending a lot of time on tiktok because que mas i guess it so this video came up on my page and it said not sure when it started but when i was a little teen i hated the color pink because it made me look darker and i thought it just didn't look pretty on me now i am obsessed living my best mexicana barbie life and i couldn't agree more because lately i know pink is in fashion but i always was i don't like pink because it's not cool and as much as I hate to admit this, I believe that I also didn't like pink because it made me look dark and there is some colorism in my family because I used to be called Prietita and I don't like that our culture sometimes focuses on the color of our skin being if you're lighter, you're more beautiful and if you're darker, then you're not as beautiful as someone who is lighter because I've been called those names before and I don't like it. But now I'm like, yeah, I am tan, estoy pretita, I'm okay, I'm still beautiful, and it doesn't matter if I'm light skin or dark skin. I am beautiful no matter what I do. And we need to stop doing that because it ruined pink for me. I used to wear pink when I was little, and then all of a sudden I stopped. I don't know if because I grew up with boys too that it had something to do with that. Like, oh, pink is for, if for too girly for me. I wanted to be a tomboy. But now, my love for pink, I got pink nails on right now, I've been buying more pink, and 
truly, I think pink is my color. Like, I didn't realize how much I liked it. Also, part of my TikTok research, I saw this video surface that said me in an AOL chat room when I was younger. And it just triggered this memory about how I used to be in chat rooms when I was like 7, 8, and my parents never knew. So my dad got us a computer in 1998, I believe, because my brother was very into computers. And finally, my dad gave into it and got us one. So my parents didn't know what the hell I was doing on the internet and my friends and I, we all had like our screen names and I remember I couldn't think of one and somebody that I knew name was like crazy something. So my AOL username was like crazy Melly. She was so crazy wild girl. Well, anyways, I was crazy because I was in chat rooms chatting with strangers. It was so normal. Like it's funny because I knew that it was wrong. I would hide it from my parents and I would go on these chat rooms and, you know, people would start messaging you like, oh, ASL, like age, sex, location. So I would be like, pretend that I'm older and I wouldn't say where I lived, but I would say I was a female. And I made friends like that and I was probably talking to freaking predators. But I was smart because I never gave like my address or my phone number or anything like that. Pero que miedo. Like, I am afraid to have children because of all the shit I used to do. Like, I would just go on there and then chat with my friends that I had just seen at school. And then we'd go into chat rooms and, like, probably bully people. <laughs> I don't even know. But maybe I'm too old for you guys because a lot of you guys are younger. But I used to be in them chat rooms and it was dangerous. Thankfully, I never got kidnapped and I never was dumb enough to like give my address out i was always scared when someone would start talking to me like from another state i'll just like exit the whole chat room and like go away but my parents never knew i was doing that i'm sorry mom if you're listening to this hey guys i just want to take a quick break to let you guys know that amazon music launched a gen mix platform gen mix was created to highlight the evolving regional mexican music and i am obsessed with every playlist that i've heard and I'm pretty sure that you would enjoy it too. They are offering my listeners a four month free trial. That's right, you heard correctly, a four month free trial to Amazon Music. You can get yours by going to getamazonmusic.com slash unbreakable Latina. Once again, that's getamazonmusic.com slash unbreakable Latina. So on today's episode, I wanted to talk about first generation guilt. And I know a lot of us have felt this way because I've seen many posts, I've seen many videos talking about this guilt. And we've all had it. And if you haven't, you're so lucky because I wish I never had it. I believe this guilt comes from the fact that we are navigating two different cultures. We're trying to meet our family's expectations, like our parents wanted to go to us to go to school, so we did. I think there's this pressure that my parents sacrificed so much they left the country that they knew to give me a better life so I need to do better and I need to do everything that I can because they sacrificed so much for me I have felt guilt for having paid time off taking vacations exploring new hobbies and having access to health insurance and therapy and healing my inner child and my parents never got to do that they still have it and sometimes I feel like I have so much and they I wish they would have experienced what I have experienced but I think that a lot of us need to realize that it was different for them it's not the same as it is for us they didn't have the same goals that we had I think that back in the day, our parents were focused on creating a family, having a job, and getting married. Those were the th top things that they wanted to do because that defined happiness back in the day. And they came over here to give us more opportunity rather than just getting married and having children. They wanted us to go to college. They wanted us to get those jobs that weren't as hard as the jobs they had to get. That's why they sacrificed so much and all those sacrifices gave us this quality of life and we should stop feeling guilty and start feeling grateful and proud that we got to experience this. Our parents came here for this and you're achieving what your parents came to the United States to do. 
to give you a better life, a better quality of life, to have that financial independence, to travel, to explore, to heal what they couldn't heal. But just because those were the things that we got doesn't mean that our parents aren't happy with what they have. Like, if I was my mom, I would feel so proud that all my sacrifices that I made to come to this country are paying off because all my kids are educated, they went to college, they have degrees, they have great jobs, and they have financial stability, something that she didn't grow up having. And also, she gets to thrive from that now because we take her on vacation, we take her on trips, on adventures, and she loves that. And I think that we need to stop feeling guilty for for achieving these things, for experiencing these things, for going on these trips, because this is why our parents came here, to give us this luxury of life that we have now, and all these opportunities, and we need to change that mentality of, I feel guilty because my parents didn't get to do this. I felt guilty the first time I moved out of my parents' home. I felt like I was abandoning my parents and I was an ungrateful child for moving because they provided me with this house that they had talked about. But the thing in my situation was that it was a toxic environment. And I think that a lot of us go through that because I've seen it. I've gotten messages from people asking me, I feel guilty for moving out and leaving my mom by herself. And for me, I did feel that guilt. I would always feel like I had to be at my mom's house at least once a week. If not, I was a terrible daughter. And I am very close with my mom and I will make those trips to come see her when I wasn't living with her. But I shouldn't have felt guilty for it because my parents raised me to be an independent woman and to fend for myself. And I was just doing what they raised me to do, be independent, live on my own. But there was a sense of guilt that I was ditching them. And I know some of you have felt that way because I've received messages that are like, how do you not feel guilty if you move out of your house? And just think of it as something new that you are teaching your family. Like you are the one changing this generation. You don't have to live with your parents forever. I want to live with my mom forever, but that's a different story. I am super close to my mom and I know not everybody has those type of relationships with their parents like I do. And I love having my mom living with me. For some others, sometimes the family environment is toxic and you want to leave that and that's okay. This type of guilt can cause us to not want to achieve more than we are achieving because we don't want to seem like we're being snobby or we're being a show off. And sometimes it could interfere with our goals. So here are a few ways on how to deal with that first gen guilt. Always question why you're feeling guilty. If you need to make a list on reasons why you feel guilty and then think about reasons why you shouldn't feel guilty. Also, you have to think about the fact that your parents had certain goals for you. For example, for me, my parents define success as me going to college and getting a degree and then getting a good paying job. But after I was done with college, I didn't land a job that I wanted. I just landed a job because... I needed to pay my bills and I needed a full-time job and I have not used my degree not once in my current career but eventually I thought it might come in handy but I have friends that went to school for a particular degree and their parents were so proud they got the job that they wanted that dream job and they get there and then they feel like they don't like it and it's not what they thought I mean you guys heard Sophia, corporate Latina, talk about how she got to her job that she worked so hard for and she hated it. And a lot of that has happened. And it's okay to not like the job that you went to school for. It's okay to not be in the field that you thought you were going to be in. You can't feel guilty for changing your career because it's better to change the career than to be miserable in something that you don't like. And most importantly, don't let that guilt stop you from exploring and from getting new experiences. If your job offers you a job far away, 
and you don't want to leave your family behind, just remember that this is for you. It's okay to detach from your family. It's okay to do your own thing. Being first gen, you are navigating two cultures. You are not forgetting where you came from. You still want to honor your parents. You want to explore all these new things. You want to create generational wealth and you want to have all these things and it's a lot of responsibility but we are trailblazers for the new generations after us and i'm proud to be a first gen latina although it comes with these challenges what generation does not come with challenges i appreciate you guys for listening i know today's episode was a little shorter than usual i've gotten used to doing longer episodes but to be honest i'm a little winded and I still don't feel 100, but hopefully by next week I feel fine. I'm actually gonna record a podcast with my brother. I'm excited to do that. I hope you guys have an amazing week and stay safe because COVID is out there and it is ruthless. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to Unbreakable Latina. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Unbreakable Latina, Twitter, Latina Podcast. And now you can follow me on YouTube as well. Don't forget to subscribe. Have a great week. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.